everybody. Hello everybody and welcome back. Well, welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be fantasy re rebooking the entirety of The Undertaker's Wrestlemania streak. Yes, I have some music. Copyright free. But some tells me I'm going to get copyrighted anyway because that's how YouTube is. Um, but anyway. We, yes, I know what we're saying. Well, The Undertaker's streak is near damn perfect. Love what you said. Near. Um, don't worry. Uh, not gonna change a lot and by a lot I mean not gonna I mean I'm gonna change a lot <laughs> uh, I'm gonna post on Facebook or a bunch of wrestling buddies I'm on I don't even think I don't even think they're considered buddies just people I know <laughs> take a look at this and be like what the fuck <laughs> but anyway let's get on with it okay so first off the NFT app or Undertaker streak legendary it's probably Undertaker is probably the most respected wrestler ever yeah, because nobody ever really says anything bad about the guy, and the guy is always talked about as being a respectful man. So, how do we book something like that? Alright, so, originally, they didn't think that Undertaker was going to have a WrestleMania. So I'm pretty sure they looked at the Undertaker and were like, okay, he wins WrestleMania 7, okay, he wins WrestleMania 8, okay, wins this, wins that, wins this. And then they were like, they are like, you know, I think it was accidentally where they were like, okay, he wins this, wins that. I think when he, you know, did the whole, like, uh, finger things at WrestleMania 18, that's when they were like, Oh, we just did something amazing! Oh, <laughs> knowing them! But, we're going to talk about this. Okay, so first, WrestleMania 7 and 8, I would keep that. Those are matches we have to keep as, like, established. Okay, have him beat established, re established stars like Jimmy Snuka and Jake Roberts. Alright, they're both leaving, uh, excuse me, they're both already on their way out anyway, so this is fine. At WrestleMania 9, this is where we change it. This is where we introduced Hulk Hogan. Because these two were already feuding either a couple months before... No, they feuded later than this. They Actually, they did. They feuded a couple... Actually, they feuded last year, WrestleMania 8. Yeah, they feuded before WrestleMania 8. So why not we culminate that right over here? WrestleMania 9 a whole year later, because Undertaker didn't wrestle at WrestleMania 8. I think he had an injury. I could be wrong. But, now you might be asking, but come on, dude, chaos. I mean, if Hulk Hogan fought Undertaker WrestleMania 9, Undertaker won half a streak. And you're right, he won. The guy won. So, this is where we actually have Undertaker win. This is my timeline. Suck it. Undertaker beats Hulk Hogan, and you know, he's 3-0. He's got the big old 3. And so, and what do we do with the main event? Hulk Hogan does not interrupt the whole Yokozuna Bret Hart match. I mean, I mean, he didn't interrupt or anything, but, but you know. But we just let Bret Hart beat Yokozuna, etc. WrestleMania uh, 10? Yeah, 10. We have Undertaker versus Kevin Nash, or Diesel as he was called for the WWE Championship. At the Royal Rumble, we have Shawn Michaels enter at number 1, have Undertaker enter at number 30. What? Sorry, I've got pugs. But, I would have it to where Shawn Michaels is so close, he throws Undertaker over the top rope. The Shawn Michaels is like, I did it, Undertaker comes back in, and no, no, no. Throws him over the top rope himself. Undertaker wins the Royal Rumble. Now you might be asking, come on, what about the Shawn Michaels deals the match? Do you really want to see it? Would you really want to see it? I mean, it was okay. It made the wrong call. At least here we can make the right call. I mean. But if, yeah, but as I just said, we're gonna have the Undertaker beat Kevin Nash and become the WWE champion. And we'll have him drop it at SummerSlam to Bret Hart. Let's say that. Anyone's fine. Or Shawn Michaels. Either one is fine. And of course, since Shawn, Shawn is not facing off against Bre uh, Diesel, we'll have him face off against Ted DiBiase. I think that would be good. Cool. I, I think these two should have a match at WrestleMania. That's just me, though. Okay, WrestleMania 12, we have Undertaker versus a rising star in Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't want to say he was called the Ringmaster at this point. I think this is where he started transitioning into this badass gimmick. But anyway, so I think this would be an amazing match. Austin and T I mean, it's always an amazing match between these two. Austin Taker at WrestleMania, I think this would be a good way to introduce Austin. But of course, he's not going to win. Taker's going to beat him. He's going to pull up a good showing, though. Maybe the Crimson Mask. Maybe not. It's depending on if you want a stipulation out of this or not. It's depending on how they book it. Next up, we keep in the whole Psycho Sid versus Taker match. Instead... But we're not having it for the uh, title. We're actually going to have uh, Stone Cold win the Royal Rumble, as he did in real life, and actually go on to, you know, main event. And But instead, we're strapping the title to Bret Hart. We have the notice, uh, notice qualification submission match 
for the WWE Championship and the main event because that match was amazing. So much better than this match. I'm only kidding because Undertaker really doesn't have anyone to deal with or have a match with. And Shawn Michaels is the only one is the only one else, but he had a knee injury. So we have the match, Taker beats Sid, etc. Now WrestleMania 14, I'm keeping the Kane versus Undertaker match. I have a reason. Just wait. Uh, Taker wins, of course. The whole build up the same and everything. WrestleMania 15, I'm taking this from Adam Blompier's uh, How WWE Should Have Booked the Higher Power, where he had Undertaker and Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 15 inside a Hell in a Cell. So this match happens as according to what he says, so if you want to know, go check out his video. Shout out to you, Plumpy. And of course, the match happens, Taker wins, etc. WrestleMania 17, Taker's not have a match at 16. I'm pretty sure he had a knee injury. Sorry, I'm, I have pups to look at. Look after. He had a knee injury, and so he comes back. You know, uh, I would keep him off television up until No Way Out. Uh, no Way Out 2000. I think it was 2000. It's 2000. So, Kurt Angle's defending against The Rock. Uh, Kurt Angle looks like he's about to win, and then gong. The lights go out. Next thing you know, The Undertaker's there, and he's there just to prove a point. He's going to take out Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is pinned by The Rock. One, two, three, and Kurt Angle is pissed. He's like, Undertaker, I'm going to kick your ass, or something like that. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm Kurt Angle, or Hank Hill. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> But of course, that match happens at WrestleMania. But of course, what's Triple H gonna do? He fought Undertaker, so we'll stick him with Chris Benoit. You know, switch their opponents. Benoit's facing off against Angle, Taker's facing off against Triple H. Let's have these two go out a match. I like it with the Michael DiBiase match. I think this would be cool. I think it would be cool. Be cool. Yeah. Of course. Oh, wait, my bad. I'll hold up. Uh, Taker wins. Can we all agree on that? Taker beats Angle. Pretty good match. I think five stars. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold up. My bad. I'm um, also keeping the notice qualification match between Undertaker and Flair. This was a good setting point. The whole ten finger thing Taker did. The whole... <laughs> yeah, the whole thing he did there. Uh, have him face off against Ric Flair still. I think the build-up was great. The whole uh, say what if you like sleeping with your sister thing. That was funny as fuck. But, of course, this match still happens as per usual. You know, notice qualification, take points, etc. So WrestleMania 19, Taker had a match against the Big Show and A Train. Big Show and A Train. So let's just scrap that. Uh, have and have Undertaker face off against Triple H. How do we book this? Well, dang, I hit the wrong button. We have Undertaker win the 2003 Royal Rumble. Sorry, Brock Lesnar, it's worth it. I promise. Undertaker tosses Brock out of the Rumble and he goes on. You know, people think, oh, he's gonna challenge. Uh, Kurt Angle for the WWE Champion, for the championship, the WWE title. Nope. He goes, when Triple H is a bragging, be like, I don't have an opponent, nobody can beat me, blah, blah, blah. Take it here, gong. Taker comes out, says, oh, you got Mayor Mania, boy. Something like that. And we keep the whole Brock versus Angle thing, except they're not in the main event. Taker, Triple H is. So a match happens. Taker wins, winning the World Heavyweight Championship. Jesus Christ, he was a god with that title. Uh, and he'll hold it up until Judgment Day, where he'll drop that back down to Triple H. Why not? And for SummerSlam, that Elimination Chamber, just replace Kevin Nash with The Undertaker, since Taker's not part of the Raw brand. Problem solved! Okay, WrestleMania 20, we're still going to keep the whole T Kane buries Undertaker thing. Um, we're going to keep all that. Undertaker turns to being the dead man persona. Boom. WrestleMania 20, Taker wins, etc. There's going to be a lot of Undertaker wins lulls in there, isn't there? There's going to be a lot of those. <laughs> WrestleMania 21, uh, we're gonna have The Undertaker face off against JBL for the WWE title. Two years of, uh, no, never mind. Never mind, I was gonna say two years of to get a title shot, but never mind. We're not gonna have them win the Rumble or anything, we're gonna give that honor to Batista, and we're just gonna stick Randy Orton and John Cena in the Money in the Bank ladder match. So, John Cena's time at the top will come later. It'll either come around uh, Survivor Series time or he'll win the belt in New Year's Revolution, okay? We'll just wait till then, okay? So, and we're not going to do Eternal, we're just going to have a JBL like, ah, oh, beating everybody, blah, 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 you know, because heels like to say they've beaten everybody. Kind of, um, kind of a trend in wrestling, actually. But if he says he's beating everybody here, Gong Tears like, uh, what about me? What about me? You want to, you want to hustle with Irish muscle? Of course, Taker wins, taking that title with him. But of course, we're going to keep the whole Edge wins the Money in the Bank thing, and on the following SmackDown, uh, Edge cashes in and becomes the WWE Championship, and we'll transition to that title, look right there. But it won't spin, it'll just... Which is probably the best feature of the title, it won't spin! But it'll still look like that, with, you know, with the 
you know, logo upright and not downward like that. And Edge will hold the title up until New Year's Revelation, like I said, where we're going to keep the whole John Cena's one through a grueling chamber, but Vince says, you got someone else to face off, and it's Triple H. And we'll have Triple H hold the title up until WrestleMania, where we'll keep that match. Hey! Sorry. Uh, WrestleMania 22 will have uh, that a year rival, a whole year rival between Edge and Taker. Keep that right there, and you know we'll have the no disqualification match, no old bar, whatever you want to call it, that Edge had with Mick Foley. But we're just gonna sl copy and paste Undertaker on there instead. <laughs> we're gonna cut Mick Foley and copy and paste Undertaker. We're, we can keep the fire spot. Sure, Taker will do it. He's crazy enough. He's crazy. He's a crazy bastard. I'm sure. But we're still gonna have Undertaker win because Jesus Christ, this is a streak, and we must have Taker wins all. Next up, we're keeping Undertaker versus Batista. Instead, um, now Taker did win the Rumble in this timeline, but we're just gonna have Sean win it, okay? Since both of them went on to face off against the champion, nothing's really changed except the Royal Rumble. Uh, against the Royal Rumble winner, Sean wins the Rumble, etc. And so WrestleMania Taker beats blah blah blah. So WrestleMania 24, I'm actually gonna do a rematch between uh, Taker and Batista. Um, we already did the whole Edge versus Taker thing in A22, and I really don't think that deserves, like, a, uh, you know, a second round to it. But this could. Batista could say, uh, that he, that the Taker's win was a fluke. We can just turn Batista heel. Done. Okay, good. Done! <laughs> and the story could be, uh, you let Edge run this brand. And now, and if you let Taker Edge run this brand, you let Edge beat you, etc. If I was champion, Edge would not be running this brand. Edge and Vicky was running hell on SmackDown. Batista could make it seem like Undertaker let it happen. That's how he feels, etc. My hair is a mess. <laughs> of course, Ed and Undertaker wins. And I'm going to be keeping the WrestleMania 25 and 26 matches between Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. They're too perfect. Too perfect. But I am changing the WrestleMania 27 match with CM Punk. Uh, we can just, for this match, you can say... Uh, okay, so the net Undertaker shows up on Raw, or, yeah, Raw, let's say Raw, Raw Smackdown, doesn't matter. And, you know, he's there, about to give, like, a little promo. The next is coming and attack him, and this could all be for the reason that they want to kill the dead man, even though you can't kill what's already dead. <laughs> but Taker beats Punk. It's pretty much like a better version of WrestleMania 29 match, because, you know, Taker had amazing matches during this time, so, yeah. And if you want, slap the no-holds barts, it's stipulation on there. It'll still work. I mean, these two could pull on an, an amazing match. That's how good they are. Okay, so the Demon Kane debuted roughly around the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. So, that's what we're going to build a few on. We're going to have him destroy Zack Ryder and John Cena, you know, to build them up. Because Zack Ryder was the fan's favorite, get him to boo him. And then, and you know how petty we are as wrestling fans. And then have him beat up John Cena... They're going to cheer first and be like, yeah, wait, wait, Zack Ryder, boo! <laughs> and then we're going to have him go after The Undertaker. It's going to, we're going to give the whole end of an era thing a meaning. End of an era, that whole thing. We're going to have Jim Ross on commentary and actually just Earl Hebner. Earl fucking Hebner, please, as the ref, even though he wasn't very popular. For like, uh, selling non-profit WWE stuff, non-made fan-made duty stuff, I don't know, something like that, um, and we're gonna have the match, we're gonna do the match, it's gonna be King to be like, you're not the demon 40 years ago, Taker, I'm going to beat you, I failed twice, but that was soft, and I was a soft shell, I was, my, I was inside of a shell, I've hatched now, I'm much stronger than I was back then, much more of a demon, etc. And so he's saying that Taker isn't the same man who was, etc. And he proved it like they have this whole face off. He proves it beating the Undertaker at WrestleMania. He becomes he doesn't go 20 and 1, he goes 19 and 1. Yeah, the lights go from black to purple to red. But when they go red, Undertaker isn't in the ring anymore. Because now you're like, this match is going to be batting, but I know, I know. Undertaker and Kane don't have that good of chemistry. But if you think about it, like, if there's a good story, I'm pretty sure these two could do something magic, especially with Jim Ross on commentary. Shit, he can call a, he can call a bad match with his, with, a, I'm sitting, with his throat sore. So there's that.
That's I want that. Yeah. So we're gonna have Undertaker skip Mania 29 and 30. Why? We need to sell the fact that yeah, he got beat at WrestleMania. We should not let this guy. So no CM Punk match at Mania 29 and no Brock match at Mania 30. Okay? We gotta make him sell this, and I mean fucking sell it. Not like how AJ Styles did in real life when he got buried. I mean fucking sell it. Tell him to take two years off. He is going to sell this summer gun. He got beat. He needs to recover from it. But at WrestleMania 31, when he returns, we're going to keep both storyline with him and Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt says he got beat, uh, and I'm going to prove to him. He's going to. I want him to come back. I'm going to summon his spirit, and I'm going to... Let's go with Bray Wyatt say. I'm going to quell his spirit, and I'm going to exercise him again. And revive him and exercise him again. So, he's going to say he's going to make Undertaker his bitch, apparently. Match happens. Under Bray Wyatt beats The Undertaker. Yep, he beats him because pretty much he carried this rivalry. Pretty much he carried it. All this hype was because of him. And we're going to have him do it again, but we're going to have him actually, you know, all that hard work paid off. Have him beat The Undertaker. Because, like, think about it. If John Cena were to carry an entire, like, carry an entire feud by himself, and let's say like CM Punk was in or scratch that, let me get better. Zack Ryder was in a rivalry with, uh, da -da -da, um, Brock Lesnar. I'm fucking off. Zack Ryder carried the whole thing. He's the underdog in Storyline. He carried the whole thing. Woo, woo, woo. You would want him to win. A lot of critics, marks like myself, would like, okay, this guy did earned it. He got, he, like, he's making this a main event level feud. He deserves the W. And Brock wins. You'd be very pissed off. So it's very much the same situation with this one. Bray wins, etc. Now, WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, we're going to have a face off against John Cena. <laughs> what? And John could say, Look, Taker, you're not the same guy. You got beat by Kane, you got beat by Bray. And let me tell you something, I've beaten both of them in the time you've been gone. From Mania 28 to, Mania, from, to right now, I've beaten both Kane and Bray Wyatt multiple times. What makes you think you can stand up to me if you couldn't beat them? We gotta, like, play it off. Like, yeah, John beat them, Taker couldn't. And, like, in his current age right now. And, like, you gotta make it play up, like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, match building. Yeah. Like, say, I'm gonna use UFC here, Sam. Let's say Conor McGregor beats fucking uh, Justin Gage, or whatever his fucking name is. And, um. Dustin Poirier lost to Justin Gage. And Poirier McGregor's going up. People are gonna look at that and be like, oh, McGregor's gonna whoop Poirier's ass. That's just how you look at it. That's how I look at it. <laughs> But, anyway, you could say that, you know, you, you can't beat, Cena says, you can't beat me the way you are, Taker. You're not a dead man anymore. You're mortal as I am, etc. So when the match comes, the American Badass, you don't hear the gong, you hear the dead man walking, the American Badass is here, stands off with John Cena. This is a new rejuvenated Taker. He looks great, sunglasses, bandana, have him cut his hair to, like, short? Like... Like, he, like, have his hair all back and shit, but, you know. But it's still pretty long. Not, not as long as that picture there. But we're going to have The Undertaker beat John Cena. This match goes a while, maybe 13 to 14 minutes. Not long, because at this point, Undertaker was made of fucking glass. But, you know. WrestleMania 33, we haven't faced off against Dean Ambrose. Now, I have a good reason for this. Now, do you guys remember the whole Dakin Souls, Dakin Holes promo he made? That was an amazing promo. I think so. It was pretty good. So he said if you he says SmackDown was his home and if anyone betrays Team SmackDown, he was coming for their ass. Or something like that. Well, since he's the American Badass, he would say he's coming for that ass. So and if you remember the Survivor series, Dean Ambrose helped who's on SmackDown helped Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins who were on Raw attack a SmackDown superstar, AJ Styles. Which was a huge cop out moment for the fans, but you could have built it up for a storyline. You could have had Taker Ambrose at Mania 33 instead of Taker Reigns. It just didn't make sense to me. And of course, it didn't make sense storyline wise to put Taker up with Styles because that also did. Oh, uh, yeah. Styles did attack a Ambrose, so there's, there's that. But still, this could work. He Taker would say that both Styles and Ambrose betrayed it, but Ambrose more specifically, he caused Team SmackDown to lose, he could say. And so he built this up at the Rumble. Dean Ambrose has been eliminating. He's like a three elimination. Yeah, three eliminations back to back to back. And then you hear gong, lights go out. Ambrose is eliminating. He looks very, very pissed off afterwards. 
the following SmackDown, Dean Ambrose is defending the Intercontinental Championship against uh, Baron Corbin. Gong, Baron Corbin wins the Intercontinental title. So, yeah, and Ambrose is like, you know, I don't know why a dead man's coming after me, but I accept your challenge, dead man. Or are you there? No, he wouldn't say that. He would say, like, I don't know why a washed up old man is trying to get in my business. Something like that. And then we can have a problem by The Undertaker saying, Remember the warning I gave you, son, from Survivor Series? I think he's got a very southern voice, right? <laughs> Remember that warning? And then he plays the tape of Ambrose helping R Rollins and Reigns. And Ambrose's like, So what? <laughs> he doesn't care. We have the match. Taker beats Ambrose, but Ambrose pulls up a hell of a fight. And then whenever he's getting up, Taker grabs his arm and, like, hoists up in the air like he did with Jeff Hardy. You know, saying, Yeah, this guy's good. You, you respect this motherfucker. So, WrestleMania 34, I was stuck either between Braun Strowman or Triple H. So, this, okay, I'm going to discuss Triple H first. Hold on. Hold on. My bad, the dogs are chewing on a battery. Okay, so, I had to uh, back and back. I had Triple H and Braun Strowman in this spot. Now, let me explain. I'm going to do Triple H first, and I'm do Braun Strowman. So, Triple H, okay, you can fit in wherever you want here. It's up to y'all. Okay, so Triple H, you could say that uh, Triple H is abusing his power again, and Undertaker's like, no, nah, I'm dealing with this right here and right now. You could say Triple H said, Triple H says, I beat Sting! I am unstoppable! And Triple H could come out and be like, well, here's one person you haven't beat, you haven't beaten me. And then, yeah, you could pretty much say Undertaker should be fighting for the people, fighting to stop this uh, tyrannical authority. Pretty much. And it's pretty much, uh, it could be, this is how we end the authority for good is having Taker beat Triple H, so that's something you could do. Or you could do this, Braun Strowman versus Undertaker, Undertaker enters the Royal Rumble around, let's say, 13. Uh, Undertaker, Braun Strowman enters number 15, say, have have him in there for about 10 minutes, and then Braun Strowman thro grabs Undertaker and goes, yeet, bye Taker. And Taker's like, okay. okay. Pretty much, it's pre pretty much the rivalry between uh, Reigns and Taker, but Strowman instead. But we're not going to have... Strowman win. We're gonna actually have the Undertaker win this match because yeah, we're building him up again. WrestleMania 35. We're gonna have him face off against Baron Corbin. Look, we're, I'm not having Corbin win. I promise. <laughs> I promise I'm not gonna have Corbin win. Now, here's how we book this rivalry. Okay, so again, Taker's only wrestling on once a fucking year. <laughs> yeah, it was a once a fucking year, <laughs> unless Saudi Arabia calls. So. Here's what you do. Baron Corbin be like, ah, nobody can touch me. I'm beating him and her. Blah blah blah. I don't fucking care. This this rivalry is just a fucking get throw it together type of shit. But I'm gonna make it as good as I can. Take her be like, you look, boy. You've been running the brand for a while now. You're mad. Daddy's little helper is no longer daddy's little helper. Just daddy's little bitch now. Something like that. And Take her could just whoop his ass at WrestleMania. That's it. Have him whoop his ass at WrestleMania. That's all you gotta do. People would like to see that. Baron Corbin getting his ass kicked. I, I like that. And I'm also keeping the whole Undertaker vs. AJ Styles thing. That was perfect. I loved the Boneyard match. Give it six stars. But anyway, guys. Thank you for watching. And the links to my gaming channel, political channel, my Instagram and Twitter are in the description below. Go subscribe to my uh, other YouTube channels and go follow my Twitter and Instagram. For more amazing content, even though I don't do shit on Instagram and Twitter, I just, I tweet once in a while. <laughs> and also, don't forget to like, comment, share, and click the bell for notifications. And plus, if you have an idea for a wrestling fantasy booking video, just comment down below. 8% chance I'll do it, since, you know, hardly anyone watches my videos. They're playing with a broom now. Anyway, guys, this is the Catacombs saying, peace.